Yeah, so hello everyone, uh, good afternoon. So we are so excited to uh, be here with you to talk about uh, WASI and Go. And uh, we uh, like, so we, we use Go every day, right? I mean, uh, so not all the people will be using Go every day. Um, so we'll start with a quick presentation on what is Go, what Go is, and then we'll jump into a bit of uh, about how WASI was added in Go. And we'll cover a few use cases of WASI, uh, like uh, in Go application today, how it is used and all. And then finally, uh, we uh, want to talk more about the ongoing development uh, about WASI and Go and how Golang is going to, uh, Golang and WASI is going to uh, continue their journey together. So my name is Rajiv. I was uh, originally, I'm from uh, Bihar, India. I'm working as software engineer at AP Muller Musk in uh, Bangalore, India. I graduated recently in 2022 from JSS College, Bangalore. Uh, I have a degree in information science and engineering. And so, like, I started with Go in 2020 when I was uh, contributing to gRPC Gateway. I did a program, uh, Google CGNF Docs. Uh, so, I'm open source enthusiast. I did a lot of contributions to open source projects and did uh, programs like LFX Mentorship, uh, Google Student Docs, and Google Summer of Code, etc. Uh, in my college days, I did a couple of internships and uh, work with companies like Lumo, Redbus, and Economize. And so I'm here with uh, Ashil. Uh, so do you want to tell us a bit about yourself, Ashil? Absolutely. Uh, so hi, uh, everyone. My name is Ashil. I am originally from France, but I flew in here from San Francisco. Uh, and I've been a Go developer for almost 10 years and started working on the Go compiler and the runtime in 2023. I do a lot of open source work. Uh, for example, I contribute to Wazero, uh, maintain uh, several libraries as well. And last year, um, I joined the team that develops and maintains the WebAssembly port of Go. And I'm also the co-founder of Dispatch.run, uh, where we're working on a platform to create reliable distributed systems. So Rajiv and I come from very different backgrounds. We actually had never met before yesterday. We connected online in the Go community and thought it would be nice to come and tell the stories of Go and WebAssembly to a broader audience. So open source is really core to the story we're here to tell. Not only because Go is powered by an open source community, but also because it is thanks to this community that the WASI port happened. Yes, yeah, so I said you about, we'll be going through a quick little bit dive on Go. So, so Go is a statically typed, uh, compiled, high programming language. And the development started in 2007 and officially it was released in 2009 uh, at Google. So it's a multi-paradigm, uh, what do we say, like multi-paradigm, uh, highly like uh, primary language oriented mostly towards scale, secure, uh, uh, building secure and scalable applications. And, uh, it, and I said you right, I mean, it is a language developed and uh, maintained by Google as an open source project. So this is... Um, uh, so we, we are going to uh, give a uh, one overview about uh, simple Go program. So, like, I mean, I, but I mean, instead of telling you a long story, uh, this is a Go program, a simple Go program, which prints uh, simple uh, hello world, uh, hello messages. So even if you are, uh, even if you had never looked at uh, Go program before, you're able to uh, easily guess like how it is working or uh, that makes sense. Uh, that makes sense of code. Like you can make a sense of, of code. And I mean, that, this is a core value of Go. Like, it's very easy to pick up. And uh, so, apart from that, Go has a rich standard library support. So we have uh, like a lot of tool, uh, Go, Go toolchain and Go ecosystem, which which helps to develop the application more better. So, and it also has a, a very portable. It compiles to a multitude uh, targets, including WebAssembly. So, I mean, Go is more than a language. Like, uh, we, have, we have, like, uh, Go toolchain, like, uh, uh, Go, Go build, uh, Go mod, Go FMT, and all this. Uh, I use it, I use it every day-to-day uh, -day, uh, life, day-to-day uh, um, -day life uh, while programming Go. 
so we can build uh, depend uh, i mean we can uh, build the go executables uh, dependency management uh, even we can test it and we, even we have high level stuff like profiling so we can profile the cpu memory uh, memories cpu and just optimize that application as much as you can so so but go is lot, i mean i said you right i mean go is lot more than a language and it uh, ecosystem of high quality uh, open source tools and libraries libraries that that basically contribute to developer productivity uh, beyond that it also has a very width uh, uh, wide breadth of applications i have I, i'm mentioning all this because um, because when using when using go go the entire tool entire tool chain is available uh, compiling web assembly so 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 ashel like how do how about tell us about um, how was you develop in go like a history about wazi and go sure um since a lot of you here are software developers i'm sure you're going to enjoy the story in particular because you've probably lived through similar ventures before Wasm support was first added to Go uh, 1.11 that shipped in 2018. But the WASI compilation target was released last year in Go 121. This is five years and 10 versions apart. And that's because Go is in big part developed by its community. And for a while, there weren't enough contributors available to work on WASI. That changed in January 2023 when Johan Brandhorst posted a message on the Gopher Slack asking if anyone was interested in forming a team to work on WASI. So my co-founder and uh, Julien replied to the message, and a few days later, we had a little group of 40 members ready to pick up the WASI work. Imagine the situation. Four engineers who had never worked together on the Go compiler or runtime and we picked up an abandoned branch that was started a few years before and had massively diverged from upstream. So let me tell you, we weren't set on the path for success. Our task was first to split out the compiler and the runtime changes so we could submit individual proposals and deliver incremental results. So we submitted our first proposal to add the compiler primitive um, that we called Go Wasm import, which allows developers to declare Go functions as host imports. And a second proposal to add a new compilation target for Wasi Preview 1 that we called Wasi P1. And as a side note, we heard that more languages are adopting the terms Wasi P1 and Wasi P2. And I personally really enjoy this cross language collaboration that we have in the WebAssembly ecosystem. So while we were going through the development of Wasi P1, a major challenge uh, was dealing with the difference in interpretation of the Wasi spec that existed in various runtimes and languages. We were mentioned in TinyGo earlier, and while TinyGo was the only Go compiler that supported Wasi at the time, so I thought to myself, that, well, that's great, right? I could use the combination of TinyGo and Wasm time as a reference to test my implementation against. But little did I know, in the file system implementation of TinyGo, uh, Wasi was only partially supported. So while we were working on getting Wasi P1 in Big Go, I also had to take a side quest to finish the implementation in TinyGo in order to have a reference to compare to. Through the perseverance of the team. After a couple of months, we had the Go Wasm import directive merged in, which we could use to implement Wasi P1. As we made progress on the Wasi P1 implementation, more developers tagged along and contributed improvements. And at that stage, we also started getting a lot of support from the core Go team. It really felt like we were going to pull it off. So, in Go 121 that was released in September 2023, uh, we shipped the WASI P1 port. And I want to take a minute to thank all the contributors who've participated in creating the WASI P1 port of Go.
There are way too many to fit on this slide, but if you're watching the talk, you know who you are and the amazing work you've done to make this a reality. This is truly a team effort from people who have never met in person. So to me, it's a great showcase of the power of open source. Now, uh, I'll head it over to Rajiv to show us what we can do with Go and Wazi. Yes, so we mentioned that uh, the first edition was the compiler directive Wasm import, and this, this is how we use it in Go. So the program declares a Go function signature without the body of the function. Proceeded with directive declaring the names of Wasm modules and uh, exported the function that, uh, that it links to. So we can, we can pass uh, into a linear uh, memory, like program memory, and other primitive types. And compilers, compilers takes uh, all, the, all the cases of translation to WebAssembly types. And as you can see, this is a fa fairly low-level directive. I mean, uh, only library maintainers usually uh, take, care of, take care to use it and would, would ex expose high-level APIs that, that invokes uh, the imports. So I'm going to show uh, like, uh, like simple uh, Go program using WASI P1. So like, take a look at how we can build uh, Go, I mean, a program targeting WASI P1. So the Go Arc and Go OS environment variables are used to control the target platforms. So uh, we, we set them WASM and WASI P1 to build uh, WASI module. And I mean, it doesn't get sim much simpler than that. I mean, uh, so you can see the program. So in this program, the Go WASM import that directive is used underneath, uh, underneath by, um, by the Go runtime to interact with the host. And when we run our program with runtime like WASI0, uh, we, we see our message uh, printing like uh, hello wazi p1 in the console so there are so now we are going to i'm going to talk about the app use cases like we have many use cases for wazi p1 and we took one use case of sqlc so wazi is currently primarily used for building uh, plugins in any language that can compile uh, to wasm and wazi and executed in any languages using wazi or uh, wasm uh, virtual machines we have a project called SQLC, which, which uh, generates type safe code from SQL. And they need differential plugin to make, uh, make things happen. So we have a plugin like uh, SQLC Django, Gen Kotlin, Gen Python, even TypeScript, et cetera. And so, so if, for every release, they extract the Go, uh, Python, or Kotlin uh, code gen into a standalone uh, respective particular language plugins, like uh, I mentioned about SQLC, Django, Gen, Kotlin, et cetera, plugins. And then these are extracted in standalone code gen and then executed, uh, I mean, built using uh, WASI P1. This, this the, I mean, basically, this allows people to customize the output by forking just a particular language pl plugin and not entirely whole uh, SQLC uh, repository. So this is the main, main thing, uh, benefits we are getting. I mean. Go can be compiled as a plugin and uh, as a plugin runner too, like uh, using Wazero, for example. And in the case of uh, SQLC, they can, they can run plugins compiled to Wazi, and then they can write their own plugins in Go and compile to Wazi. The reason for using Wazi P1 is that, as, uh, that it is much smaller amount of code to change to write the plugins. This is the main reason. Uh, why we're using Wazi P1 in uh, generating those plugins in SQLC project. So I'm going to head over uh, to Ashil, uh, who's going to talk more about the uh, qualities and limitations of Wazi P1. Ashil. Thanks, Rajiv. So <clears throat> Go is a language with native concurrency built in. And when compiling to Wazi, we use non-blocking file descriptors to integrate with the Go runtime and allow concurrent operations to make progress without blocking one another. This integrates with other runtime features also, like timers. So we get access to a very powerful programming tool when using Go with Wazi. However, the Wasm architecture uses, that Go uses is single-threaded. So even though the scheduler can arrange to schedule Go routines concurrently, 
Any host function call causes the entire program to block. Usually it's not a problem, but something that is good to be aware of. A notable absence in WASI Preview 1 is a complete implementation of network sockets, which limits supports of key features in the Go standard library, like HTTP clients and servers. We also don't have previous slide, please. Uh, we also don't have support for uh, exported functions uh, yet. And uh, while networking is limited, there is extensions. Previous slide, please. Uh, there are extensions uh, like uh, on platforms like Wasmer or uh, Wasmedge uh, that can be used uh, through third-party libraries. And those libraries are also great to showcase of how to use the GoWasm import directive. So now we actually have two compilers that can target WASI. So when should we use one or the other? The primary reason to use TinyGo is for the smaller binary size that it produces. If you're shipping code to a browser, for example, this is something that matters a lot. Another reason is that it generally implements features ahead of big Go. For example, TinyGo had support for WASI long before Go did. And as a matter of fact, WASI Preview 2 is already in, uh, being implemented in TinyGo. Now, TinyGo makes some trade-offs and won't support 100% of the Go standard library or the toolchain. So if you need full portability, then this is when you should consider using Go instead. So to wrap it up, let's take a quick look at what's happening in Go today. At this time, there are two proposals that, are being, that have been accepted and are being worked on. The current WebAssembly architecture of Go uses a 64-bit address space, even though WebAssembly hosts usually assume 32-bit. And this hybrid model really complicates interaction with the host a lot. It makes things like implementing WASI Preview 2, for example, really difficult. So we're working on addressing this uh, into a new architecture that we call WASM32. The second proposal intends to address one of the limitations. We're adding a Go WASM export compiler directive that would allow a developer to declare Go functions that are exported in the, compiler, uh, in the compiled WebAssembly module. This also is a blocker to further adopting uh, WASM Preview 2. Uh, and finally, there's work on TinyGo uh, to experiment with an implementation of YZP2, uh, which is essential uh, to a potential you know, uh, upstream into Go. So Go is definitely becoming a big player in the WebAssembly ecosystem. And we're always looking for more friends to help us on this journey. So if you're inspired, you want to get involved, use YZP1. Join the Gopher Slack and come talk to us. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> so I think we have some time left. So we are open for uh, questions and answers, if you have any. All right. All right. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.